Hello, Timmy Academy, welcome. Um, I just got back from Virginia doing a store, a store buyout kind of. Um, the guy, Jason, who I was dealing with, he owned a store about, I think he got rid of it about five years ago. Um, we did a small deal about, I want to say a $3,500 deal. Um, about a month ago uh, for some sealed product and some singles uh, and then he was looking to liquidate so he contacted me and I just drove up to uh, Virginia about three hours and change away earlier today and uh, did the deal with him and I just wanted to show you um, kind of the amount the quantity uh, of cards and I actually I filled up my pickup truck uh, the bed and the cab and I still have to go up there next week and pick up about another 50,000 or so bulk cards um, it's kind of unpicked bulk so there could be some good stuff in there but this is a lot of stuff um, so you can see I mean it's dark obviously but there are just boxes and boxes uh, filling up the back of my pickup truck a large tub with um, with a bunch of stuff in it but pretty much the entire back of the pickup truck is full and then and I don't have a cap for my pickup truck because it's a weird size it's a sidestep um, so I put a tarp over it um, it looked like it was not gonna rain tonight uh, but a, on the way back <sighs> I caught about five minutes worth of rain and it was probably the scariest five minutes of the last week um, I tied down the, the tarp really well thankfully um, and the rain was not heavy but <sighs> when I talk about scary you know I spent ten thousand dollars on this uh, on this store buyout. So, ten thousand dollars of product in the back of the truck with nothing but a tarp on it to protect you from Mother Nature. That is a scary thing. Um, here's kind of the inside. So I've got three five thousand boxes. There's a bunch of boxes there on the floor, and then in the back is just full of two thousand boxes and some other stuff. Um, Ooh, I lost it there and it goes down to the floor so it's a lot of stuff I literally packed the truck full um, and of course we'll have a breakdown video of um, of kind of what's all in it and and how all that goes um, so this is a strange situation because neither of us really knew the value of the the collection as a whole um, he was a shop owner and he kind of knew what he had. Um, so, and we, we have built up a pretty decent rapport. So he would say on the low end, it's worth about 15 grand. So, and I think looking th through a bunch of the stuff, that's probably accurate. Uh, some of the cooler things were a, uh, one of those old spell bound, spell bound, spell craft. Play mats, the two-person play mats um, that's got a really awesome Birds of Paradise drawing on it from Mark Poole and signed by Poole um, and it's in excellent condition so that right there probably is about a grand plus um, and there's a lot of other there's a play set of Zendikar, a play set of Shards of Lara, a play set of Conflux, a play set of Alara Reborn and so on and so forth um, so I think the value is definitely there and looking through it for a bit. It took us about three hours to uh, go through it um, and and load it all into the truck and get it all strapped down. Uh, so total work time today was about nine hours just driving, picking up the collection and coming back. And you can see it's dark out now. Um, so I'm going to start unloading it and getting it in my hopes with this collection is I will have enough TCG worthy cards to kind of cross that 3000 threshold and get into the TCG direct program and that will change my entire business so 
fingers crossed um, that that's the case and I can keep a 3,000 card inventory. Um, honestly, after this buy, I'll probably close the faucet on collection buying for about a month or so to give me time to break this down and flush this all through the system. I think this is the beginning of hitting the big time, so uh, wish me luck and I'll talk to you soon. Peace, guys. Hello again to me, Academy. Um, so I just got done watching, and I'm gonna kind of stream these together, so you'll see this five seconds ago like I just did. Um, the video I made when I came back from the buyout in Virginia, and my timetable's granted a little messed up, so you've, you've seen some newer videos before, um, before this one, but uh, I just kind of wanted to circle back and talk about the things that I was talking about um, in that previous video. Um, so I, as you probably noticed, I have, I did not upload a video of the fines from that buyout. Um, I've talked a little bit about it, but just wanted to go through a quick breakdown. Um, so when I went up for the second purchase, uh, it wasn't 50,000 cards. It was more like a hundred to 200,000 cards. And you can see it's um, I had to set up a second shelf. That's a lot of that is the bulk from that store buyout. Um, and I've gone through some of it and picked out, um, you know, there were stacks of, there was a stack of 40 noxious, uh, revivals, noxious retrieve, noxious revival from new Phyrexia. Um, uncommon it was worth about 10 bucks. So, uh, you know, there was, there was plenty plenty of unpicked bulk there that was that was worth some decent cash I mean even stuff um, like uh, what's uh, new Phyrexia was actually great in the uncommon slot um, dismember uh, three four dollar uncommon there was a stack of 40 or 50 of those anyway getting ahead um, so I didn't I didn't record a video of that um, but I thought you'd want to know kind of what the biggest fines and the biggest chunk of fines were. Um, so that was, that was, um, a decent part of it was uncommons in the bulk that there were stacks of near mint copies of. Uh, another thing was there were three gilded drakes and five time spirals from both from Urza Saga. Uh, they were spread throughout the collection, some in binders, some randomly loose in boxes. Um, I think those were the only heavy hitting reserve list. There was there was a tainted pact, I believe. Uh, that sold. I didn't keep it because it's um, it's not reserve list. And actually, I, I sold off the Gilded Drakes, and I think I still had two time spirals, two or three time spirals left. Um, the let's see what else were the there were a bunch of promos, a bunch of F and M promos from. Uh, 2013, 2014, 2015. Let me see. I've got a couple of them over here. Um, and other random sealed packs like this. I think we had talked about it. But like stuff like Farseek. Um, let's see. So these these promo packs, they're sealed. There's four copies in most of them. Some, some there's ten. Um, a lot of those are still around. I've sold some of them in certain Facebook groups, like the promo group and the seal group and stuff like that. Um, but they're moving slowly, and I, ex I fully expected them to. Um, I would say majority of the profit in that buyout was from five to ten dollar singles, play sets of near mint, five to ten dollar singles. Uh, I just actually the other day finished breaking down more of the binders because I kind of went through and cherry picked the biggest cards first and then I went through a second round um, and I just ran through and pulled out all the good uncommons and all the rares and mythics from Zendikar, Shards of Alara, uh, Alara Reborn, Mirrodin Besieged, Fifth Dawn, Mirrodin, Lorwyn. I don't think there was a binder of Lorwyn block rares. It was just uncommons. But there's enough common and uncommon two, three dollar cards and place that's all near mint, you know, it, it adds up. So I just went through and, and 
I still probably have 10 binders I have to do that to. And then starts the fine tooth comb. So that's kind of, I guess that's another topic. I could record an entire video on that, on how the process of when you're bringing in a lot of collections, um, you're kind of first sort, second sort, third sort, and then eventually you get down to just having the bulk from the collection. Um, other things from that, so that, step back. That's, that's where a lot of the, um, the value in the collection was, was in those five to $10 cards. There was a lot of 30, $40 cards too. Um, there was a decent amount of fetch lands and stuff like that, but I'd say a majority of the value in the collection came from those five to ten dollar cards. Um, let's see what else. So, um, so overall, I don't think I'm done breaking down the store buyout. Um, I've still got a lot of inventory from it, but I believe I'm in the black. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because everything goes on TCG Player and all the collections blend together. It's hard to keep direct data on one collection or another. Um, so I kind of run tally in my head of each collection, but that's not a good system. So I'd say most likely in the black on that one already and still have a ton of inventory. Uh, the Spellground playmat did not sell for over a grand. Um, it sold for $500 though, uh, which was, I thought, a good a good price for me and for the guy who bought it. He was really excited to own it. Um, honestly, I wanted to keep it. It's so such a cool piece with, you know, the BOP from Pool. Um, I should have at least taken a picture or, you know, recorded a video of it. It's pretty cool. Um, that collection did get me into TCG Direct. So what I did for anyone looking to get into the Direct program, if you've been on TCG for a while, it might, I, I imagine it's a bit easier. You know, I've been doing TCG Player for a year and a half. Well, now it's been almost two years. Um, but at that point, it was a little over a year and a half, had good feedback, blah, blah, blah. So actually what I did was I took uh, some of the bulk that was sorted by set and in near mint condition um, and I took some of the commons and uncommons and that were there were a hundred or so of and I took my actual inventory was probably about 1600 and I just listed hundreds of copies of commons and uncommons of maybe t 10 or 12 different cards um, at inflated prices just to get my inventory up to that above 3,000 point because as long as you're hitting 600 a week 600 dollars a week in sales um and your seller feedback is there's some threshold but it essentially has to be good and then um the only other stipulation is 3,000 cards in inventory so i just kind of padded my inventory um and got into the direct program and now i think i'm three weeks into the direct program and it's going pretty well. Overall, my fees are higher at about 24%. Eh, it shifts back and forth between 22 and 24%. I think it really has to do with the amount of small things you're selling compared to large things. Um, I've been uploading a lot of smaller things because you can actually make money on 50 cent to a dollar cards because you're not shipping it. You have to be careful. We'll make a whole nother video on this but essentially you have to be careful not to list it too low so it doesn't sell direct to your customers and you're shipping out a 20 cent card and putting a stamp on it and all that kind of stuff but we'll go through a, a video of TCG direct theory how to get on there um, what it looks like how to adjust pricing um, for most things over five dollars I'm just doing like I always have TCG low um, there's a weird threshold at the $20 mark where your shipping is a lot more expensive. So at $20, I think the sh they charge you over $3 for shipping. And before that, they charge you 98 cents, which honestly is kind of ridiculous because I believe they're charging the customer 78 cents on that under five threshold. So I don't know why they're, 
it seems a little exploitative. I, anyone, feel free to comment below and, and let me know if this isn't the case. If it's free shipping for TCG Direct for the consumer under $5, but I don't think it is. Anyway, I could be wrong, but it, it would seem a bit exploitative if they were charging $0.78 cents to the buyer and um, $0.98 cents to the seller. Anyway, so when you hit that $20, $20 threshold, sometimes it's better to list a card at $19.99 rather than $21.99 because they're going to charge you more for shipping, so you wind up. We'll talk about that in the direct video. Um, point being, I did get on the direct program. It's going pretty well so far. It saved me a lot of time. I've actually had time to start sorting um, and getting back to land bundles on eBay um, and kind of pulling more value out of the massive amount of bulk of that's over here because I know there's you know, good valuable cards in there. I just haven't had time to go through and sort them. So, um, really what it's going to save you is time. You'll probably break even as far as, well, your, your sales will go up. Your volume of sales will go up. Um, but as far as shipping your own orders versus TCG player shipping your orders, you're probably going to break even as far as dollar amount goes. Um, but it saves you a ton of time, which is invaluable, as you know. Um, I also, after that store, I did not close the faucet on buying. I've been buying nonstop ever since that happened. Um, it just seems to be the kind of the way you have to do it. I've talked to some other sellers recently and we all kind of agree. You just spend all your liquidity every couple weeks, max out some credit cards, sell product, and do it all over again. It's it's draining um, mentally, but uh, it allows us to do what we want to do as far as working for ourselves and that kind of deal. Um, I've got some other exciting news in the pipeline. Um, I'll share that with you soon. Could be making some major life shifts here in the next year and kind of focusing on some other business things going on and if it, if that's the case um well i'll record that too uh you know this is primarily an mtg channel but it's also i'd like it to be a learning experience for everyone on how to carve your own path in life um become an entrepreneur, throw everything else out the window and caution to the wind and just kind of start your own thing. So um, I'll share that soon, as soon as some of the details become more clear and um, things get settled and more, more finalized. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the wrap up of the store buyout. Um, I've got a lot more inventory to go through and I will probably continue to be picking apart this collection uh, for the next, I'd say six months. Um, while I've got you here, let's look at some things that came in the other day. Uh, yesterday, today's Tuesday, mail started again on Monday always exciting Mondays are always exciting because you get no mail on Sunday and you know um, so I'm just gonna kind of turn the camera around and we'll uh, there's my new whiteboard uh, let's see if I can get set up here hold please So I had some things, some some things that I wanted to grab, come in, and some other things. 
Uh, so first we'll go through, we just had some higher end singles come in, uh, a couple smaller collections, um, Psych Riff, some of the, a lot of these are foil, foil reflecting pool, that's a promo, personal tutor, uh, Damnation apparently this is getting reprinted, so bad timing on that, uh, Sliver Queen, uh, she's probably, I think he said she's in moderately played condition, um, they're all in those annoying sleeves. That's gonna bug the crap out of me. I hate these sleeves. I mean, I guess I like the design of them. They're just so frustrating when you're trying to work and go quickly. Um, let's take a look at the condition. Uh, yeah. I'd say, based on surface wear, I'd probably list that at uh, LP minus MP. Um, I wonder if Charles may want that. All my queens get passed to him first before going anywhere else. Uh, some invention, spellseeker, cavern, uh, expeditions, foil seed time. That's pretty cool. Force of negation, foil, borderless. Foil, Mystical Tutor, Loon Tender from Mystery Boosters. Um, I hadn't, I haven't seen one of these yet. Um, I knew it was in from the vault, but uh, I hadn't seen the strip mine, so that's kind of cool. And Prismatic Vista. So just some larger pieces they'll go up on uh, Facebook first. Um, I created a Google Doc for my inventory, um, so you can actually see that. Uh, below the links below um, there'll be a, a link for my uh, TCG player store my Google Doc for inventory for direct sales um, and my email and I want to say my eBay which has some stuff on it oh the eBay has those promos from uh, the store buyout um, so some smaller stuff um, Revival. That's the card I was talking about. Uh, foil Hinterland, Foil Pure and Toothy, Foil Kaya, Gristle Brand. So this is the smaller stuff. This will get loaded immediately on TCG Player here in the next five minutes. So we had some larger things kind of for my personal collection slash um, slash for some selling, but reserveless stuff. Um, so Bolt. My bolt collection finally got a signed rush, um, which I did not have, and I got two of the judge promos. I was a little, um, they were sold to me at a good price, but as near mint minus LP plus, so I thought it was a really good price, but they're actually more in the LP, LP minus range, uh, even kind of hedging on MP, in my opinion, for high-end foils like this. Um, Either way, it was still a good price, so, you know, I just let the guy know, hey, your grading was kind of crappy on that, um, but, uh, just wanted to let you know, so I didn't really ask for any money back or anything. Um, these, I did have to negotiate, um, this plateau was supposed to be LP+, plus. Replenish was supposed to be near mint, this thing's in really rough shape, and the cradle supposed to be LP and it's more in an MP kind of thing and just random fell worse down. I don't even know where that came from but that'll go in the binders. Um, Plateau will probably get listed. They were all kind of in LP minus MP plus condition. Um, like the surface is just, this was supposed to be LP plus and you can see that there's just a lot of surface wear on it. Um, no real edging wear on any of them but um, I had to contact the guy, renegotiate. He gave me, he's sending me another 50 or $60 worth of cards. Um, because, yeah, it, it needs to make up. This is supposed to be a near mint replenish, and I was hoping it was, because near mint reserve list, but there's a lot of play wear on it, a lot of surface wear. Um, and the biggest problem there is always people don't grade with a light, so they don't hold it up to the light and see all the surface wear. They just go by like edging wear and whatnot. But like, 
See the cradle's even got like a little ding on the side. This is supposed to be LP. The back is pretty worn. So anyway, I just wanted to share those. Um, always remember, you know, no one's gonna grade as good as you want them to. Um, I would really like to get to the point where people send me cards first and trust that I'm not gonna rip them off and I can audit and then pay or negotiate or send the cards back, but I think I've got a long way to go for that. It happens sometimes. Um, I'd say probably one out of every eight deals happens like that, but you know, it is what it is. So these will go, I don't, I'm not selling the cradle, I'm not selling the replenish. Um, the plateau will be for sale. And all the rest of this you'll see in my inventories. Anyway, just wanted to show that off. Um, we'll talk soon. Uh, next educational video will most likely be a TCG Direct program and how to get there if you're a regular TCG, you know, seller. Um, or maybe I'll do a, how to start up TCG in the first place, and then we'll do a direct. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've got any ideas for what you want to see, what you want to learn about. Um, all right, talk to you soon.